Hello, it's very nice to be here. So, for the last... Zipcar was founded in 2000, and for the last 15 years I've been watching my own company and other companies evolve, and I see that there's a fundamental organizational paradigm that we are now adopting that is really transforming how we build businesses, how we work, and ultimately how we shape economies, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. So if I think about Zipcar, there were three reasons why I think we had a very high chance of success. The first was that we leveraged excess capacity, by which I mean, pre-Zipcar, there were only two ways that you could consume a car. You could either own it, you'd buy the entire asset for an average of about 6,000 euros a year, 18% of the average household's income, yet you'd use it 95% of the time. The second most expensive thing you can spot, you only was idle 95% of the time. The other way that you would consume it, vehicles, is that you could, I feel like I want to stand on this side, I feel like <laughs> trapped, um, was that you could do car rental, in which case you would have to buy it in these 24-hour bundles. You'd do it. So in both ways that you would consume cars, you're always forced to buy more than you wanted. So I knew if we let people just pay for what they wanted to use, we had this huge economic advantage over the old way of doing things. The second thing is that we built what I think of as a platform for participation. If you think of what it takes after 15 years still to rent a car, I knew that we, if you're going to rent a car for an hour, we had to take what was a complex transaction and make it incredibly simple. And we had to give the power of the company and put it right into the hands of the individual. So instead of it taking 15 or 20 minutes, we had to bring it down to 15 seconds and empower people, and that was this platform that we gave them the power to do things that the company used to do. And then lastly, we thought of our members, our customers as members, and always as collaborators. So again, if you think of this car rental model, in the old days, it's very adversarial. There's the company on one side of the counter and the customer on the other, and the company is saying, oh, you person who's renting, you're going to ruin the car, you're going to have a car accident, not tell me about it. I don't trust you, and the customer is looking at the company and saying, you quoted me one price, now you're trying to upsell me, you want to charge me more for insurance, and you're charging me for gas, it's very, very adversarial. Zipcar took the counter away, said, you know what, we're all in this together, we're going to trust you, we're going to have you do things that the car rental company used to do. You're going to walk around the car and tell us if there's a problem with it. We're going to leave a fuel card in the car, and you're going to fill it up when it gets to a quarter tank. You're going to tell us, you know, what are the best places to do it. So I look at this slide, and I love this slide. This is a photo of... Um, people leaving the hospital with their firstborn children, and we had such a good relationships that they're saying, oh, you know what, let's stop and get a photo and send it to Zipcar. Like, we were, <laughs> we were their pals. Um, and this cartoon I, I love, so this, Zipcar was founded in 2000, but here's Moses coming down out of the mountain. This is last year's cartoon. Is there a bottom on the section for comments? So even with God, we are not passive consumers of what he has to say. We are co-creators. Let's, let's discuss. So it's these three things, excess capacity, people, and platforms, that are the building blocks of this new organizational structure that I'm calling Peers, Inc. And it's, so it's people and platforms inventing a collaborative economy, which I think of as something bigger than the sharing economy, and totally reinventing capitalism. You will recognize this structure in all of these companies, which over the last 15 years, we have been talking about endlessly with awe. Without them leveraging excess capacity and us having a deep involvement, these companies do not exist. And if you look at this list, I mean, think about Skype, a telecommunications company built on the back of my laptop, my video camera, and my internet connection. They didn't have any infrastructure. And I just threw down the side, I want you to pay attention, this is happening in every sector of the economy. The free and open source movement is a Peers Inc. structure. TransferWise, here in London, Peers Inc. Spotify, massive online co open courses, Bitcoin and the blockchain, you know, co-housing, crowdsourcing, all of this is a Peers Inc. organizational structure. Platforms leveraging excess capacity and um, with a whole bunch of diverse peers participating. If we think about excess capacity, it is fundamentally sharing. It's saying, this is an asset that I don't completely control and I'm having to share it. And my favorite example is bed sharing. Um, if I, I do a lot of bed sharing, I don't know if you guys do, um, and I travel quite a bit and I stay at my friends' houses. 
in their spare bedroom that's probably doubling as a home office. If I'm extra lucky, I get a double bed, yes. And if I'm really unlucky, ick, they told the teenager to move and I'm supposed to sleep in that slimy sheets and really this is why hotels were invented. Absolutely, we all know hotels are bed sharing. And I used to tell my staff at Zipcar, don't call it car sharing. People have weird ideas about the word sharing. Imagine if we called hotels bed sharing. So the next time you're in that hotel, think about all the people. <laughs> so I did some research. What are the largest ones in the world? The Intercontinental Hotel Group, after 65 years, 645,000 rooms in 100 countries. And we can know that was a lot of work because the second largest is Hilton. They've been at it for 93 years. You know where I'm going. It's still phenomenal to say Airbnb, in its fourth year, had 650,000 rooms. And you want to say, oh my god, how can this happen? The world has transformed. What is going on? Couchsurfing, in its ninth year, had two and a half million rooms. Like, this is a phenomenal thing that is going on and should make all of you quake. It is really, it's earth shattering. So what is happening? Why did we ever invent companies and governments? We invented them to do things that we as individuals can't do. And what are those things? Large investments. If it's going to cost millions of dollars, don't ask me, Robin Chase. I don't have millions of dollars. I can't do that. If it's going to be something that requires lots of kinds of intelligence, I am really smart at two things. If it's going to take 10 or 15, I can't do it. I need a company or government to be doing it. If it requires standards and a very strong consistency, I'm a puny person. I can't make you guys do anything. You have to have an entity with, with strength and power to make and enforce these standards. Typically, this is all kind of bound up in a brand promise, and they're global. But on the flip side, individuals actually have things they are really, really good at and better than companies. Those I think of as localization, customization, and specialization. If we think about it, Companies can do those things. They find them costly and annoying, and they would rather not. And if you think about industrialization, it's been ripping out and standardizing, ripping out the customized and localized and specialized, and trying to make these big standard things so you can get these economies of scale. You can see that these things are really, really complementary, that in fact we have complementary skill sets. And because the internet, new thing, exists, Dealing with many, many small parts is no longer an issue, and we have this new organizational structure that's possible, this new collaboration that was not possible before that now is very easy to deal with lots of small things. So people, entities should be sticking with what they do best. The Inc. creates the platform for participation. The peers deliver a diversity of offering. And I kind of boil this down to this little yin and yang. It's very complementary, very symbiotic. Each side has to leave enough on the table for the other person to other side to participate, otherwise they won't. And it's all kind of swimming in the sea of excess capacity. So let me go through these. I adore excess capacity because it's so resource and cost efficient. Like, and as an entrepreneur, that is my magnet place to go because it has these this, this transforms the economics. I'm defining excess capacity as something that already exists. It's been paid for, but there's more value there. So if you find this, what do you do with it? Number one, you slice it. And that's what Zipcar did. And that's what Upwork also is doing. I, Zipcar, you can just pay for what you want. Just, uh, just pay for what you use, nothing else. A big asset that we've now chopped into pieces. Or you can aggregate it. That's what Airbnb did. Airbnb took a million little tiny pieces and brought it together on the platform and now it's useful. Now we have one, one unified insurance promise. We have the same ways to communicate and to pay for things. I can compare and contrast. It is wholly different than a million bed and breakfasts. Or third, and the place that you get the most value is by opening up that asset and discovering brand new value. And let me see here. Um, if we think about the whole open data movement, that there's now 40, mm, 40 countries that have opened up a million data sets, and McKinsey did a lovely study a couple years ago and said, you know what, there's $3 trillion worth of value there. So the companies and the transit authorities and the local governments collected that data for their own purposes. They make an open APIs, a platform for participation, and we all extract brand new ways of getting value out of that. So if we look at the Inc. side, the Inc builds this platform for participation, and what's lovely about platforms is their platformness. 
They organize very comp they organize lots of little parts. They make the complex a very, very simple, and they give the power of the corporation or the power of the government down to the smaller local entity. And you still get economies of scale, and they can grow really, really fast because they are platforms. And so my examples here, Etsy, so a marketplace for things we make ourselves. This curve is very, very typical for these platform companies. It takes a long time to get going. Once you get going, you can scale really fast. So in 2013, they grew 50%, and in 2014, 50%, 50 and 40. Um, Blablacar, so real ride sharing out of France. I want to go from Paris to Berlin in my own car. I have three empty seats. I sell those seats. They actually started in 2006. But the curve is so phenomenal. Today, they move 4 million people every month. But they did not buy a track. They did not buy a train car. They did not buy a plane. But they're moving as many as 10,000 trains or 10,747s every month. They are the largest competitor now to the rail and bus industry in, throughout Europe. Let's look at the peers. What do they deliver? Diversity. The diversity that they provide is what makes this entire model sing, because that's where you get the innovation and creativity from, and resilience and redundancy. And my favorite example here would be platforms, smartphones, and apps. The smartphone is a platform for participation. It is way, way more complex and difficult to make than the apps. The apps are light little fluffy things on top. I've made them, they're not that fluffy, but they're a lot easier to make than the, than the app, than the smartphone. And again, think of excess capacity. I bought my smartphone for $600 for four killer apps. All the other apps are free riders on my purchase that I've already made. And so what's amazing is around creativity, the smartphone was, found, was first created around 2009, and in these years, we've seen over 2 million apps created. Sure, some of those are duplicates, but in those six or seven years, it's got to be one of the highest paces of innovation humanity has ever seen. And why? Because each person is bringing their own life experience, their own skills, their own industry to bear on what they can do on this particular platform. So I love this Peers Inc. concept and this Peers Inc. organizational paradigm. And why? Because for me, it has what I will say, think of as three miracles. And before I tell you the miracles, in order to appreciate miracles, you have to be really depressed. So I'm going to make you really depressed, and then I will undepress you. What is the most depressing thing? So here is um, climate change, World Bank, a very conservative financial institution. This report is, by 2100, if every country does everything they promise to do, we will have a four degrees Celsius average global warming. And if you're like me, what does it mean to go forward four degrees? Most of us have no idea what it means to average warm the Earth by four degrees. So I went and did my research. The last time we were minus four degrees, where we're sitting here right now and where I sleep in my bed in Boston was under several kilometers of ice. So the movement, the, the difference of what it feels like to move warmer four degrees is us right now under several kilometers of ice to today. But that took 20,000 years to do that change, and we're going forward that in 85. And that's if we do everything, the, that's if countries do everything they promised to do. When you look at this, this source data even more deeply, when, we're, when they're talking about that climate change, that's on average. Over land, where it will be warmer, it'll be plus six degrees warmer. Humans have never existed, ever, in plus four degrees, not only to say plus six degrees. And that's if every country does what they're supposed to do. If they don't, we'll be seeing that by 2060. So I want to instill in you this unbelievable urgency. Do you intend to be around in 15 years by 2040? By 2040, it's going to be hell. Already it's going to be hell. And we are sitting around going to our meetings, walking and enjoying London, and talking to our children. And in 15 years, we are, we are on the edge of calamity. When you look at what these climate scientists say, you know, catastrophic. Catastrophic means billions of people are going to be dead by 2100, unless we get a move on. So I am very filled with urgency. Um, my friend Banny Banerjee had this great sentence, you can't solve exponential problems with linear solutions. And that is what we've been doing again and again. So I say, you know what? Try this new organizational paradigm. Try Peers, Inc to the miracles, why I feel like this is, this is my only optimism. 
And I feel like every single thing we should be doing, we are doing, must be organized in this organizational structure because this is how we can get these miracles done. Because we are leveraging excess capacity, we can defy the laws of physics. And what do I mean by that? Imagine in 2000, instead of saying, I'm going to invent a zip car, I said, I'm going to build the largest hotel chain in the world. I'm going to build 650,000 rooms in four years. Everyone in this room, every venture capitalist, every financier, my husband would have said, physically impossible. You can't find all that land. You can't finance it. You can't get the architect to build it. You can't build it. You can't put the furniture in, hire the staff, have the people never make any mistakes do 650,000 rooms in four years, physically impossible. So this is what business as usual asset building would look like for hotels, and here's Airbnb. Why? Because they leveraged excess capacity. So I'm in the realm of transportation, and when we talk about we're going to build high-speed rail and we're going to build these brand new cities, I think, screw that. By the time that is, bu is built, and by the time we have any CO2 reductions from that, the game is over. We need to be using assets that we have here and now, right this second. Miracle number two, because we're building a platforms for participation, we can tap exponential learning. Learning is about iterations, and as an individual, I can do a certain number of iterations and get better at something, and as companies, we think, whoa, we can do way more iterations, which is why companies learn faster than people. Platforms do way more iterations than that. And my example here is how long it takes to learn a foreign language for which the unit of measurement is a semester of college. What can you learn in a semester of college? 130 hours. It used to be that the Rosetta Stone, 50, you could do it in 54 hours. That was the one that if you worked for the World Bank or a diplomat, you would say, yeah, I'm doing that 54 hours. How amazing. Duolingo is my new favorite company in the world. They do free online language learning. They do a lot of A-B testing constantly. If I teach you this, ask you the question this way versus this way, which is the better way? And I talked to the CEO and he said, and overnight, he can have 150,000 people answering which is the better way. And so he has it down to 34 hours in which you can reliably learn a semester of, of a foreign language. Here's their growth curve. They are pretty much exactly three years old now, 90 million users in three years. And to think about excess capacity, if you think of language learning, it's language pairs from English into French, from English into Spanish. A year and a half ago, he opened up, he opened up his processes and he said, anyone can put any language pairs on here, Thai into Czechoslovakian. A year and a half ago, he opened it up, 45 million people are learning language pairs that he did not invent. So, miracle number three. Because we're working with a diversity of peers, the right person will appear. And not Superman, eh, he's strong, he can fly, like whatever. Everybody here is way, way stronger than him and better because we have our smartphones and we can go the fastest, best route and know so much more about it. Um, here, this example, in December of 2014, Obama said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna n improve relationships with C Cuba. Six months later, Airbnb has 2,000 listings there. There is no other way you're going to do it except for with a diversity of peers who are in every single nook and cranny with their own unique expertise and locations and specializations. So the thing to remember, Peers Inc. is a collaboration. You cannot do it yourself. Each of these things, exponential growth, exponential <coughs> learning, and what I think of as uh, hyperlocal adaptation, all the things we need to address climate only happen when you have the platform and the peers because the platform, neither platform nor peers can do these jobs by themselves. They can only do it together. So we constantly remember it's a collaboration. If I think about, I believe that we are profoundly moving away from what I would define as industrial capitalism. And I would say industrial capitalism is where we, we made a very strong boundary around what was inside the company and outside the company. We had patents and copyrights and trademarks and certifications and what's in is in and what's out is out and that was the way we maximized value. And that was true. Today, the internet exists. The, the new corporate structure is much more diffuse, there are no hard edges, what's in and out is much more, much more loose, and so there are four principles I want to, I'm going to close with that for me are true. And in the Q&A, you can, you can challenge me on any one of these if you don't think these are true. So because the internet exists, here are these four things. If we think about assets, shared networked assets, 
always deliver more value than closed proprietary ones. And we know it does, happens two ways. One, you use the asset more efficiently. Two, brand new value is found on those assets. If we think about humans, you guys are smart. You think people in your company are smart. We all always knew that there are more smart people outside of this room or outside of our company. Today, because they're networked and we can find them, that is where the most innovation and the most creativity is. So more networked minds are always smarter and more creative than fewer closed proprietary minds. If we think about opportunity and benefits, the benefits and opportunities of shared open assets are always larger than the problems associated with shared open assets. When I did Zipcar and I was trying to raise money, they said to me, oh, everyone's going to ruin the car. They're going to have car accidents. They're not going to tell you. You know what? Some people are jerks. It's a very small percentage. We know them. We penalize them. And then we kick them out. Meantime, a million people are sharing 13,000 cars around the globe. If you think about Wikipedia, there, yes, there are some misstatements of fact, and yes, some people's pages get scribble scrabbled up. We see it, we identify it, we deal with it. We have 4.8 million entries in the US language Wikipedia, the world's encyclopedia. And then lastly, from a very self-interested, I only care about me perspective, when I participate in one of these, I always get more than what I give. I edit three lines in Wikipedia, I have the 4.8 million entries. I reserve three hours a month on Zipcar, and I, Robin Chase, have access to 13,000 cars parked in major cities everywhere I go. So, if I conclude, we are living in a time of such incredible rapid pace of change. So we see climate and environmental effects bearing down us incredibly, the climate refugees coming north right this second. We see technology changing the pace of business and what is known and what is possible so rapidly. We have a fear around capitalism. Are we going to have another gigantic, enormous economic collapse? Peers Inc. is the structure to address these dynamic times, because this is the structure that enables you to experiment, iterate, adapt, and evolve, and is the only structure I know that can do that. So this slide is why, for me, we are profoundly, completely transforming economies worldwide, because if you're a company, you want to become a platform like this. So some of you guys have my book. Thank you very much. <laughs>